that's going to be it for our announcements. Josh, I'm going to invite you up, and uh, Josh is going to hook us up tonight with the Christmas story uh, from Luke chapter 2. Reading from the Gospel of Luke. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, fear not, For behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. And when the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Josh. Let's pray, and then um, we're going to dive into that word for just a short little bit here this evening. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this incredible word that you've given to us tonight that Josh hooked us up with. I thank you that... um, Man, there's so much in there that literally for the next 50 years uh, in my life, if you give me that many, I'll be able to preach that text in so many different angles with so many different things, just gold. It's a gold mine, Lord, that we can mine and mine and mine. So I pray right now, Lord, that the familiarity of that story that was just read would not, um, would not cause us to, to go into a kind of lull here and miss what you would want us to hear tonight. We know the story, or do we? And so help us to kind of dig some more of that gold out of that tonight. Lord, come and do what only you can do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, have you ever got have you ever got that gift that was kind of the game changer gift? You ever get that one? And if if you right now don't know what it is, you haven't got the gift yet. Okay? Anybody get the gift that just kind of changed you like in some way? Really? I thought there'd be a couple. Now, now I'm not saying this year. I'm saying over your lifetime. Have you gotten that gift that was just like, it kind of stirred you up in some way? Really? Okay, I thought there'd be a couple more. Okay, I got a couple. I got a couple. Yeah, okay. There's that, there's that gift that can just do something to you. I, I don't think I've gotten that gift yet. I feel like it's going to come from like one of my grandkids or something. Handed me the little card that they made. You know, my little future grand, I don't have a granddaughter yet. Don't be scared. But you know, my little sweet little granddaughter is going to come up to me someday and she's going to hand me something that, you know, I don't know, was like 
she made into something. It's just going to be like cut me to the heart. I can see that being that gift for me. There's gifts like this in movies. Um, have, you guys remember Friends? When, um, when Ross, so I got Friends up here. Yeah, there it is. Uh, friends, when uh, Ross gave Rachel the pin, do you remember that? Uh, Ross gave Rachel the little pin, and it was, it was literally in getting that gift, it changed the Ross and Rachel relationship. Do you remember that? Okay, people, come on. Nobody watches Friends. Okay, well, let me try another one. Inception. Do you remember Inception when, when um, if you haven't watched this movie, I'm telling you, it's like one of my favorites. When, um, well, I can't say too much with this one, but, but um, there's a scene where the, 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 the guy is getting a, a gift planted inside of his like dreams and there's a moment where he opens up a safe and something that's been planted inside the safe, I'm not going to say what it is, literally shifts the way this guy thinks. It, it completely changes him. It changes everything about him. Um, anybody see the Family Stone? Uh, remember the Family Stone movie where Meredith gets the, the picture and uh, she thinks it's for one situation, but it, you know, it was a picture of a different situation. But when that picture came in, it literally cut the whole family to the heart. Okay, maybe you guys don't watch the stuff I watch. I don't know. What are you watching? Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I don't know. There's some gifts that when you get them, they're just kind of another level gift. Like, it doesn't have to cost necessarily a lot. It's just something about that gift is connected to some kind of deeper meaning or something. And it just kind of floods then through the rest of your life. And it kind of does something to you, you know. Uh, for me, it would probably be the 22 I maybe got as a kid. I can remember that. That was a big deal. It'd probably be the closest. The 22 and my future granddaughter. I don't know which one's going to win out in the end. Uh, but there's some gifts that just come and they, they kind of cut us. Christmas, listen to this. Christmas in this time is God trying to highlight to you, trying to show you, that he has gifted you with something that provides you with the ultimate, it provides you with meaning to life, it provides you with purpose, it, provi it actually will cut to your very identity, it provides you with value and worth, Christmas is God getting you a gift that when, when understood and received, it literally shapes and changes everything. It's intertwined so much in the fabric of your life that every part of you has to change. It does change from that simple gift. Uh, listen to what uh, the angels say to the shepherds, don't be afraid. Just think about that alone. Don't be afraid. I come with incredible joy. Joy. Already joy starts to be a, a thing that like, wouldn't joy, like true joy be better than even a 22? Have no fear. I bring you good news of great joy. Uh, a Savior has been born. And then the other thing that I picked up on from the text this time reading it, uh, uh, don't fear, have incredible joy. Incredible joy is being brought to you. A Savior, and then peace to men. Peace to mankind. Holy cow. These are things we pray for. God, let there be world peace. And 2,000 years ago, the angel said, I bring you, don't be afraid, joy, incredible joy, a savior, peace. 
those four things in my mind as I was looking at the text, if you, if you let those cut you to, your, to the depths of your being, it will shift your identity, it will bring you incredible value and worth and it, it, will, it, will, trans, it will be the kind of gift that like, you, you kind of sit up in your seat on. And what's amazing about this is how these things get brought to us. Because what you would expect with those things, joy, peace, a savior, don't be afraid, you'd expect a teaching. Someone's going to come to bring me a kind of teaching. Or somebody's going to come to bring me a way of life that I need to live my life by. Or I have to engage some activity. I have to do something so that I can get all this stuff. You following me? And yet, what does the angel say? He says... And this, this jumped at me this year. He says, this will be the sign to you. What's it going to be? What's it going to be? What's the sign? What do I got to do? What do I got to know? This will be the sign to you. You will find a baby in a manger. That's the sign. That's the gift. A baby pooping and peeing in a manger. Don't be afraid. Don't have to be afraid. Incredible joy, a savior, peace. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a baby in a manger. Now Jesus is going to do stuff. Follow me here. Stick with me for just two seconds. Jesus is going to do stuff. Jesus is going to teach stuff. He's going to tell us to do things. He's going to tell us to stop doing things. Jesus is going to promise us things. There's going to be all sorts of activity by Jesus. And you can read about that from the scriptures. He's going to go to the cross and die to take your sin away from you. He's going to rise from the dead Easter morning. He's going to rise from the dead and conquer even death itself. He's going to ascend to the Father and from there he will return again one day. To judge the living and the dead. That will happen. These are all activities of God. And honestly, most Christmases, I would preach the verbs of Christmas. That's typically where I go. But this, this year, it just caught me different. And I'm leaning into the noun of the baby. The baby. The, this will be the sign to you. You will find... A baby lying in a manger. What does that mean? <laughs> I don't know. I don't even think I know. There is so much packed in that. That God would come and put on flesh and allow himself to be put into a manger as a baby, just laying there. That, the noun of that, just him, the person of that, is truly enough. That's enough. He is enough. Just, just lay in there. I, 
Christmas is Jesus being the deep, deep gift that you need most. Just himself. God in the flesh. And everything that that means. It's not going to be found ultimately in a teaching. It's not going to be found ultimately in a, a way of life that I have to accomplish and do. It's not going to be found ultimately in some performance that I have to perform. In the end, the gift ultimately that we need is found in a person. Jesus, a baby in a manger. Tim Keller, I was reading some of his, uh, he's got a book out with kind of focusing on the Christmas stuff and I was reading through it and I'm kind of a Tim Keller fan, but I just love this, what he says here. I'm just two quick quotes from him. To unite with him by faith. Now he's talking about Jesus there. To unite to Jesus with faith, by faith, to know him in love, is to have life. Period, full stop. There's nothing else for you to achieve or attain. And then he kind of goes on just a little bit after that. He says, do what it takes to get close to him. Christmas is a challenge as well as a promise about fellowship with God. See, Christmas is about God making a way for you to be united. Follow me here. Christmas is a way for you to be united to him. To him, the person. He wants to unite himself to us. And scripture The scriptures talk about this all over the place. What it means to be, Paul really leans into this phrase, being in Christ and what that means. But 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 see, it's all about Jesus coming down, heaven breaking in, not us climbing the ladder to get to God, but God coming down to us. Breaking in to rule and reign in our lives. To save us. Who are in deep need. Spiritually, with our sin. Our mistakes, our shortcomings. The fact that you're going to die one day. I mean, that's always a good little Christmas, little cheer. (laughs) Merry Christmas to all and to all a good night. But we have to face death just this past week. A family from our church allowed me to walk with them and the loss of someone that they love. It's a real thing. We're going to deal with it. We have to deal with it. Death and decay of this world. Just this morning somebody shared that one of their little cats, their animals was dying. Death, we have to deal with this. What's going to save us? What's going to help us? What's been helping you over the decades? Well, maybe we'll just elect the right person. That'll solve it. Maybe one more iPhone 97 will come out and we'll be good to go. Jesus, the gift that he gives himself. God making a way for you to connect to himself, to be joined to himself. No fear, incredible joy, salvation, and peace. And the rest of the Bible is literally expanding on the depths of what being united to Christ looks like and what it means. So here's my last question. How do we get it? How do we get united to Christ? 
I mean, if I were you, I'd ask that question. If that's the promise, if that's what Christmas is about, is God wanting to unite himself to us, not just come in and give us a teaching that, that just makes us, okay, now all this stuff we have to do. But if, it, if the ultimate peace is Jesus himself coming, the way, the truth, the life, and allowing us to be united to him, how do we get united to him? I think the shepherds give us a clue. Verse 20. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God. What is that? That strikes me as faith. That is believing, and as believing is happening, the only thing they can do is praise and glorify God. Like, they have to do that. They've just gotten to see God in the flesh. They've gotten to make a connection. The angels helped them do this. That their Savior has been born. This gift has been given, and it's been kind of unpacked for them now in such a way that they're catching up with just how big of a gift it really is. And as that's unpacking, their response is one of either... Well, screw it. We're going back to the bar or something. No, they weren't in the bar. Maybe they were. I don't know. Or their response is praising and glorifying God. Maybe they went back to the bar and praised and glorified God. Maybe that's what they did. I don't know. But they praised and glorified God. Faith. Trusting in Jesus. Trusting in him. In a couple of weeks, we might spend some time looking at the wise men who come. And bow down and worship him. Faith unites us to Jesus. I want to take you to Philippians chapter 3. I read this just a couple days ago. Philippians chapter 3 just from like yesterday became, no, maybe it was this morning. Was it this morning, David, that I said? Yeah, this, this day's gone like crazy. Just this morning around breakfast, I read Philippians chapter three, and it's become like my favorite, it's, this is my favorite b- b- chapter of the Bible. Like the whole Bible, it's like my favorite. Philippi- just because of this morning. Philippians chapter three, verse nine. I want to gain Christ. Well, that's not quite how he says it. That's not quite the context. But I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ. The righteousness from God that depends on faith. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and may share in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, that by any means possible, I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Do you see that in verse 10? That I may know him and be so close to him. How do we get it? It's by faith. Maybe you've heard that before. Cool. But maybe you haven't. You maybe have never heard the Christmas story like it's been said tonight. That Jesus came and he himself is enough to cast out fear. To provide you with incredible joy. To save you. To give you peace. And it's all wrapped up in a little baby. God in the flesh. How do I get united to that? By faith. You might literally be thinking something like this. Potentially, you're thinking something like, I've never heard it that way. I thought I had to always do a bunch of stuff. Potentially, 
you've never heard the gospel. You maybe have never heard the gospel before. Maybe you have, but maybe you haven't. And the good news of incredible joy that will be for all people, starting with the lowly shepherds, it's a reminder that it's for every single person in this room. It's for every single person watching online. And God calls us to respond with faith, to be united to him. Purpose, value, your very identity. It's all wrapped up in this incredible gift where God gives you himself.